number two, and I need to move quickly. Our expression of, of our love for God, it will affect the way we walk. And my walk, notice in that verse in, in, in 2 Timothy, he says that people will be lovers of themselves. They will be abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. But if you're a lover of God, it will affect your walk, the way you live your life. You will be somebody who walks in humility and thankful, just being thankful to the Lord for who you are. It will affect the way you live. People can be able to look at you and say, oh, this person is different. Listen, I don't know about you, but probably maybe I'm still old school. I still believe in an old time religion that changes people. I used to be blind, but now I see. I used to do this, but now since I met the Savior, stop doing that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There has to be something different about you. You cannot, you, 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 cannot be, you cannot be born again and say, I have had a real experience with, with Jesus Christ and I'm a lover of God. And yet you're still doing all kinds of madness. Going to all the wrong places. It changes the person. Your walk is changed. It changes the way you treat people. Can we talk about that just for a little while? How you talk to your house help and how you treat them. Now it's going to get very quiet in here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? My house help at home should be the first to give at my testimony and say, ah, so and so, my boss, that person is truly born again. But sometimes you talk to house helps, they will tell you who the real people are. I'm serious. Because somewhere in our minds, we think they are, they are, they are children of a lesser God. We treat them like they're useless. Many of them are not in that job because that was their dream job. Circumstances in their lives conspired and now they're in your home, but God brings them to your home, not so that you can punish them further, but so that you can love them, love them back to wholeness, love them and probably encourage them to go to the next level. It is our responsibility. You should see that person that this is somebody, an opportunity, although they're working in my house, is an opportunity for me to minister to them. Oh, can I talk to you a little bit further? Can I take it a bit further? I know it's getting uncomfortable. It's getting hot in here, isn't it? <laughs> when you came with your car to church, that person, that volunteer was trying to help you in the parking lot. Under the hot sun. If there are people who have tales to tell are our parking attendants, and by the way, these are volunteers. They're not on full, they're not, they're not members of staff. But these are people who they feel that that is their labor of love. That they want you as you're coming to church. you in your nice, beautiful car. They're telling you, please park here so that when you go into the service and you're worshiping, you will be comfortable that your car is taken care of. But sometimes they give you instructions. Oh my goodness. And some of us back at them. Some of us talk back at them. Sometimes we don't even listen to what they are saying. Sometimes, unfortunately, we insult them. Very quiet, it's getting hot in here. You want to go? <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Our walk, the way I walk, the way I live, must be affected. How I drive my car in this crazy Nairobi jam. Are you the one who is always overlapping? Can we talk in this place? Do you obey traffic rules? I know it's a difficult thing travel, driving in Nairobi, but even in the road, I must be a witness. There was a time in Gong, I remember I was, we were going somewhere. So I'm driving, and it was just in some of those back streets of Ngong. And so there was this pickup, and this guy was kind of driving a little crazy. You know the way they are. You know, and this guy is cutting me off all the time, and I'm wondering, who is this dude? I mean, what is wrong with him? Can he just drive properly? And I'm getting a bit agitated, so we are going, and the guy is driving. Was, I tried to overtake him, he doesn't want me to overtake, and I'm wondering, like, what's going on? Anybody ever gone through that? Okay, pray for me, because it's clearly, I have an issue. So here I am, and I'm wondering, this guy. So at one point, uh, our, you know, I, I, we had to stop, and of course, so our cars now are just parallel to each other. So then I see this guy, he rolled down his window, and then he's with a big smile on his face, and he's like, if you're a pastor. <laughs> 
Now imagine, imagine, if I had to be there, where, where, you know the way we do Kenyans, where, where. <laughs> I said, what else if you were a pastor? Now, what do you think I said? Do you think I'll say, wait, wait, Nini, you know, the pastor, do you think I told you? <laughs> okay, hey, what else if you were? Hey, Amen, hallelujah. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm, because sometimes that's how we lose our witness. Just by those small, but can I tell you, it's not in the big things. It's not in the big things. You don't have to go and, and, and steal billions. Sometimes it's in the small, little things. That's where the battle is won or lost. How we treat people in the supermarket, those cashiers. Eesh. Is there anybody here? Sometimes we lose our cool, isn't it? How do we talk to them? Imagine if that person knew you are a believer, would you still talk to them that way? And sometimes I'll tell you, sometimes our patience is test tested, isn't it? I was just giving this example. So you go to the supermarket and you're in this queue. And um, so the person who is in front of you is this, unfortunately a lot of times, and no disrespect to all the women here, is a lady. <laughs> so they, are, and they have this, their cart is full, you know, to the brim, right? So they come and tit, tit, tit. So the cashier is everything, 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 you know. So they, and it takes quite a bit of time. Then, see, of course, you know, nowadays they have those machines, so it shows you how much. So this mama, <laughs> after all this time, so she's told how much it is. Of course, she can see, but she's told how much it is. Then, that's the time she gets her big bag. I don't know what you usually let this girl in these things. Eh? That's the time now she starts looking for her pass, <laughs> which has the money. So you're there at the queue, and you're counting one to ten because you're thinking this is. Then, after a few minutes of shuffling, she finds her pass. Then she removes the pass, and she says, I didn't remember Ngapi. <laughs> Anybody ever gone through that? <laughs> so it's not just me. <laughs> and, and she's a nice person. I mean, it's not that there's something wrong with her. It's just that, you know, and then, then of course she starts counting, you know. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Moving on. In other words, friends, all I'm just saying, it's in the small things. Are you hearing me? Our passions. Notice in 2 Timothy, he says that people will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. What are your passions? What is that thing that drives you? And sometimes you can always tell that your, your heart is being misled by the things that you're becoming passionate about. You know, for example, and it can, they can be very legitimate things. It doesn't have to be things that are out there. It can be very legitimate things. Maybe, maybe, maybe probably you're, you're passionate about your soccer. I love soccer too, by the way. You know, but sometimes if that thing seems to be taking you over, then probably it's a time for me to take a step back and say, hey, maybe it's something that is not, that I have to guard my heart. I have to ensure that my passions are, other passions for other things are not taking over my love for the things of God. And then finally, of course, uh, and this is not exhaustive, but our expression of our love to God should be reflected in our giving, friends. Uh, we offer first ourselves, our bodies as living sacrifices. We give of ourselves, we give of our time. That's why we've been encouraging you in this month of missions and outreach. You need to give of your time, give of your resources. It means that sometimes you'll get uncomfortable. It will not be out of your convenience. Sometimes you, it will be out of your, uh, just out of that labor of love. You say, whether it is convenient or not, I will show up. Whether it is shining or not, I will come. Whether it is raining or not, I will be there. That's what it's all about. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because it's not, can you imagine if Christ had not come for us? Can you, he would have probably said, no, 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 it's not convenient for me. Uh, I'd rather just sit right here where I am, I have been. Let these mortals sort out their own problems. We will not be here, friends. But our love 
for what for, for God is what compels us and it should be reflected in our giving of our resources our time because God has blessed us by the way a lot of times the excuse that we give as Christians and as God's people that I cannot give is because oh now the price of fuel has gone up isn't it talk to me people because there's always an excuse why I cannot give why I cannot participate but you know research has shown this that and, and by the way in trying to define who a wealthy person is sitting here I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of us are wealthy can I demonstrate that how many of you here you have a television set at home TV if it's black and white let me see by the way do they still have those just lift up I'm not going to ask for your TV just lift up your hand <laughs> like, I'm not, just lift up you have a TV at home just lift it up which then suggests to me that you have electricity in your house anybody with electricity in the house electricity let me see all right now this is irrespective of where you live are you with me all right if you have a TV in your house and you have electricity in your house you are wealthy because a TV and electricity, those are luxury items. <laughs> Can we talk in this place? How, do you need electricity to live? <laughs> you don't. In other words, if you can afford something of luxury, it means you're not poor. Tell your neighbor you're not poor. Oh. And here is the deal, friend. Nobody is too poor not to have anything to give i may not give money but i can give my time i may not have the liquidity for cash but there is something i can give find that thing and give it out give it away <laughs>